Okay, Unit 7, we're going to be talking about chemical compounds, um, intermolecular forces, or IMFs, as well as types of solids. And to start off with, we're going to start with um, looking at 7A and using chemical formulas. Okay, so for the meaning of formulas, if you think about what they tell us, a subscript in a formula gives us one of two things. It gives us either the simplest ratio of atoms or the number of atoms in that molecule. Okay, which we've seen before, um, but it can also provide us with a ratio of moles of atoms. For example, if we look at the following compound, which is ibuprofen, same drug or medication that is in Advil or generic ibuprofen, the formula is C13H18O2. And again, that formula is going to tell us a few things. Number one, if we look at it from the atom perspective, that we would have 13 atoms of carbon. 18 atoms of hydrogen and 2 atoms of oxygen, which would be, if we were thinking about Lewis dot structures, we would know that that's how many letters we would have to have. But if we also think of it from a mole perspective, okay, you would also, if we had one, for every one molecule of ibuprofen, you would have 13 moles of carbon, 18 moles of hydrogen, and 2 moles of oxygen. So we also can use it to tell us a ratio of moles, which really is the only kind of new thing right now. All right, for example, if I had 2 moles of ibuprofen, how many moles of each atom would I have? Well, I would solve that by doing this this way. If I had 2.00 moles of ibuprofen, and yes, we're back to labeling all the boxes, making sure that we have everything labeled correctly. If I first look at carbon, well, I have 13 moles of carbon, and that simply comes from the subscript, and every one mole of ibuprofen. So if I take, since it's on the top, 13 times 2, three significant figures in my data, okay, that would tell me that I have 26.0 moles of carbon. Okay, and then we would do the same process for hydrogen, except hydrogen we would take, we would substitute this part. The first step is going to be exactly the same, so I'm not going to take the time to rewrite that. Hydrogen, it would be 18 moles of hydrogen for every one mole of ibuprofen. So we would take 18 times 2 and get, um, instead of 26, we would get 36.0 moles of hydrogen, and then oxygen, there's 2, so it would be um, 2 times 2, which would be 4.00 moles of O2. Only thing new is I'm using those subscripts to tell me how many, how much of different things I would have. Okay, now we got to talk about formula mass, which in a good way it's very close to molar mass, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's the mass of a molecule, ion, or formula unit, which we talk about with primarily ionic compounds. It's the sum of the mass of all the atoms in the chemical formula. This comes from the periodic table, so if you don't have a periodic table, go ahead and take one out. And the units on these are AMU, or atomic mass unit. That's what that was going to stand for, which we saw earlier as well. Okay, so for example, water. Go to the periodic table, find hydrogen. You're going to look for the number that says 1.01. .01. Now, in one molecule of, at of water, there are two hydrogen atoms. So I have to take 2 times 1.01, .01, and that's going to be hydrogen's contribution. And then oxygen, there's only one of them because there's no subscript. Find I hydrogen, oxygen on the periodic table. Its molar mass, or formula mass, is 16.00. So if I add all that up, so just to make the math a little bit easier here, 2.02 plus 16.00, I'm going to end up with 18.02, and it's going to be AMUs. Okay, is what we're looking for. Um, whenever we find these, we trump sig figs a little bit. You're going to have two sig figs. Your unit is AMUs. All right, let's do another one, potassium chlorate. Now, they don't give me the formula, so I have to figure out the formula first. So as a reminder, potassium is a group 1 ion, so it's automatically going to have a 1 plus charge. The formula for the chlorate ion is ClO3. It is a 1 minus. Since there it's, it's a 1 to 1, the formula would be KClO3. Okay, so if I go to the periodic table, I'm going to find that so, uh, potassium has a formula mass of 39.10. There's one of those. So I got the potassium. Now I need to find chlorine. There's only one of those. Its molar mass is 35.45. 
Last but not least, I need three oxygens. You do have to show me this work in some way, shape, or form. We will get to a point in the semester where you don't, but for right now when we are first learning it, you have to show me this is about as easy, as, as simple as I can get it. So uh, total, if I add those up, should have been 122.55 AMUs. Okay, done. All right, now molar mass, we've seen before, this is the mass of one mole of a pure substance. Luckily, numerically, it is exactly equal to the formula mass, so exactly what we just did. The only difference is instead of AMUs for your units, you're going to have grams per mole. Okay, so that's it. All right, so let's do barium nitrate. All right, again, they didn't give me the formula. I have to have the formula in order to determine its molar mass. So barium is a group 2 metal, so it's always a 2+. plus. It has two valence electrons. It gives them away. Nitrate is a 1 minus charge, so when I crisscross those, because remember the whole thing has to equal 0, I'm gonna, still going to have 1 barium, but I'm going to have 2 nitrates to balance that out, right? That superscript becomes the subscript on this thing. I have to put it in parentheses because it's a polyatomic ion. Okay, so now let's find the molar mass. Well, barium, if I find barium on the periodic table, I need one of them. Its molar mass is 137.33. Now, when this is in parentheses, this is just like algebra, okay? If I kind of look at the nitrate and figure out the amount of atoms, I'm going to have two, oops, two, oops, there we go, nitrogens, and six oxygens, right? Because 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. So if I go to the periodic table, I find nitrogen. It's going to be 2 times 14.01. Then I'm going to need 6 oxygens, which is 16.00. We'll get some of these memorized. Again, you have to show me the work to start off with on these. If I add all that up, I should have gotten 261.35, and this time it's grams per mole, simply because it wanted to know the molar mass and not the formula mass. Okay, now a little bit of review. You don't have this slide, but you should have some blank space down on the bottom of your paper. We've seen molar mass in conversions. It's not anything different. If you think back to um, Unit 3, we did a lot of conversions where we went from grams to moles, and that was where we used molar mass. Okay, the only difference now is we're going to use compounds instead of just atoms. Then the other conversion is to go from moles to the number of atoms. Again, it's not going away. And this is where we use Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 22nd. Now, the other curveball that could get thrown in is any of the metric prefixes off of this end, your kilograms, your milligrams, your nanograms, et cetera, et cetera. All still fair game, doesn't go away. All right, so let's look at how this can be used as a conversion factor, again, between grams and moles, just like we saw last semester. So what is the mass in grams of 2.50 moles of oxygen gas? Okay, now in parentheses, I have O2 written here, because if you remember, one of the things we learned um, right at the end of the semester was all of the elements that are found as diatomic elements, and Hunkel Fibber is the easiest way to remember those, so since it's talking about plain old oxygen gas, all by itself, we find it as O2. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the molar mass then of O2 is 2 times 16.00 for a total of 35.00 grams. Now my known, because that doesn't go away either, 2.50 moles of O2, my unknown, is the number of grams. No mention of atoms, so I don't have to do Avogadro's number. I'm going to start with 2.50 moles of O2, which has three significant figures. I want to go 2 grams, so the 32.00 grams is going to go on top of O2. The 1 mole of O2 is going to go on the bottom. Again, since this is on the top here, I'm going to multiply 2.50 times 32, which is going to give me 80.0, because I need three significant figures, grams of oxygen. Okay? All right, now, let's come back to the ibuprofen. Um, we're going to do a few different problems with this one molecule to kind of stop having to do the same math over and over again. But the first thing we got to do is find the molar mass. So we got to have 13 carbons, which is going to be 13 times 12.01. I got to have 18 hydrogens, 
So it's carbon's contribution. Hydrogen's contribution is 18 times 1.01. .01, and oxygen's contribution is 2 times 16.00. Again, all of these numbers with the decimals come off of the periodic table. I add those all up. I get 206.31 grams per mole. Okay, so now I'm going to use this oops, to answer some other questions. All right, let's say if the tablets in a bottle contain a, t contain a total of 33 grams of ibuprofen, how many moles are in the bottle? So I'm going to do my known and unknown up here just for the sake of space. I've got 33 grams of my lovely compound here, H18O2. I want to know the moles. Okay, so let me set this up here. I always start with the data that I'm given. So I got 33 grams. Again, all of the parts of these problems have to be labeled. You can't just say 13, 33 times, you know, whatever, and call it even. You got to have everything labeled. Now, if we want to go two moles, so this time my one mole is going to go on the top, H18. O2, and if I, th I already found the molar mass. Okay, I did that on the last problem. So this is where my 206.31 grams comes into play because I already found that. Now, since it's on the bottom, I'm going to divide it. So I'm going to take 33, divide it by 206.31. I can only have two significant figures in my final answer, so it's going to leave me with 0.16 moles of ibuprofen. Now, Probably not the most burning question in the world, but let's say that they then asked you how many molecules of ibuprofen are in the bottle. Okay, well, the molecules of ibuprofen in the bottle, if I want to go to molecules, I have to have moles, which I already found right here. So I'm going to start with my 0.16 moles of ibuprofen. Sorry, a little bit shaky down the bottom here. And I want to go two atoms or molecules. So I use Avogadro's number. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Yes, I have to label everything. I'll mark you off if you don't. And for Avogadro's number, it's one mole of ibuprofen. Since it's on the top, I want to multiply it. Don't forget to use parentheses. You will not get the correct answer. I still can only have two significant figures. So 9.6 times 10 to the 22nd atoms, just enough room, H18O2. Okay, only new thing here is the fact that we're doing molar mass of compounds. That's it. All the rest of this is review. Okay, now another part that we can use is looking at the elements in a compound. So this is also new. It wants to know the number of moles of carbon in that bottle. So my unknown up here is it wants to know the moles of carbon. And you may be going, well, they didn't give any numbers. What am I supposed to use? Well, if I look back on the last slide, I know that I had 0.16 moles of the entire compound. OK, so if I start with 0.16 moles of ibuprofen, 18O2, I remember, this gives me a mole ratio. So in one mole of the entire compound, See, oops, 13 H18O2. There are 13 moles of carbon. Remember, if we were going to draw a Lewis Stott structure, we'd have 13 of them. Um, and so I can only have two, since it's on the top, I'm going to multiply. I get rid of that unit. 13 times 0.16 is going to be 2.1 moles of carbon in that same bottle. And let's say, last but not least, they want to know the total mass of grams. Well, I've got my moles. Now they want to know the grams of carbon. And that's going to be a pretty simple conversion. It's going to be, oops, 2.1 <laughs> moles of carbon. We want to go to grams. Um, carbon is not part of Hunkel fiber, so I don't have to treat it as diatomic. But in one mole of carbon, I'm going to go to the periodic table. Molar mass is 12.01 grams. So I got to take 2, there we go, 0.1 times 12.01. Only two significant figures. It's going to be 25 grams of carbon. Okay. 
Uh, I hope that helps, and we'll do more problems.